Howdy guys and gals, welcome back to The Social Regressive. Like me, you might be wondering what the difference is between an aftermarket barrel and one of the factory ones. Everybody just kind of says that it's better, but it's actually better in some very specific ways which we're going to describe right here and I'll be able to show using some uh, targets that I shot yesterday. This is my Savage Telekinesis rifle. This has my own stock that I designed along with my father-in-law, shaped this myself, and it's the best stock that you can't buy. Um, but up here, the big deal is that I have a preferred barrel blanks barrel on here. This is a kind of heavy varmint weight, 26 inch threaded barrel, and you can see that it has that spiral fluting on it. Really stinking cool looking. This is 243 Winchester, and this has a one and eight twist. The original barrel that came on this, with this was a Savage 12FV originally, and it still has the, the 12FV action, all the, uh, the 12FV internals, including the blind magazine that's in there. The, the big thing that's been swapped out here, of course, is the stock and that barrel. But the original barrel actually shot .3 MOA groups when I first started doing some hand loading for it. And I wasn't even, yeah, I, I didn't know a lot of the techniques that I know now. Like you can see some of the, the stuff that I'm working on here in the background. I got some 350 Legends, some 57 by 28 So uh, make sure you don't miss the some of the upcoming videos. We're going to do some pretty interesting stuff. Make sure you hit that notification bell down below. But anyway, uh, I was shooting very well with that rifle. And I have slain many a critter with that original Savage uh, 26 inch barrel that was on there mostly using varmint bullets like the uh, the 87 grain V max that you see right here I just love that bullet But even though I could get a really good group out of that barrel and I could make really good effects down range I started to notice some strange things about it I started noticing first off that my first shot of the day when the barrel was cold It would be down and left from all of the others and then it would creep up and right and from then on, I could shoot really small groups with it. It seemed to be consistent at that point. I also noticed that if I changed my powder weights, like say I was working up a new hand load, that they would not only start to drift, you know, kind of move along with the harmonics of the barrel, but they would start to, uh, like say if I shot a group that had a slightly lower powered, powder charge, but still had... Uh, you know, still grouped very well and was hitting the harmonic node, that they would actually print on a different spot of the paper than another one with, you know, maybe uh, more powder, but also hitting a, a good harmonic node. Okay, so that was really interesting. And then if I swapped out my bullets, maybe I had a, a good 100 grain load, I had a good 87, good 75, I could take them all out to the range on the same day, and they would hit different spots on the paper, even though they were still shooting very tightly. And that is where we start to see the difference with an aftermarket barrel. These are some of the things that I have noticed just yesterday, all in one go, that this completely negates. First off, I went out to test, uh, well, okay, I'm going to show you the targets first. Right here, you see my four targets of the day. They don't look very good, do they? Now, the first thing you have to keep in mind is that these are actually at 400 yards. These are not 100 or 200 yard targets. These are at 400 yards. Still not entirely impressive, right? I can certainly shoot a lot better. I've, you know, I've shot rifles here in the background that I've done a lot better with at, uh, at longer distances. These should be a lot closer to each other. But there are a couple things going on here. First off, each of these targets is a Satterley load workup. These, none of these actually have the same powder charge. So each of these shots is 0.3 grains of powder off from each other. This is all using Reloader 16. And uh, as you saw with the, uh, the one mile rifle, the 12 FE that we put together uh, back here, that uh, Reloader 16 was amazing for us. It, it made getting on target at a mile actually relatively easy. Uh, it was consistently hitting the gong at that long distance. A uh, really cool rifle. Make sure you check out that whole series if you missed it. But uh, you'll see here that, okay, these are all 10 shots in each of these groups with totally different powder charges. I'm trying to figure out where my harmonic node is and I'm trying to figure out uh, my velocity. So I've got a chronograph up close and I'm you know, kind of running things to see uh, where my velocities kind of plateau out on the graph and, uh, and then where they're kind of clustering up a little closer, especially vertically uh, here on these targets. So none of these have the same powder charge, 
and the initial shot in this upper left target. Here, I'll, I'll make this one uh, quite a bit closer. This is a 105 grain BTHP match bullet, and this one has a cold bore shot in it. And I actually can't really tell. Uh, I went out and I had forgotten to bring some ciders with me to warm the barrel up and kind of get everything uh, very stable for the rest of my shooting. Turns out I didn't really need it. Uh, this barrel seems to be immune to the cold bore effects. This one does not need to warm up in order to uh, start getting precisely on target. Uh, so that is benefit number one. That's, uh, and that's a really big deal because when I go out on a hunt, when you guys go out on a hunt, you don't want to have a throwaway shot. You got your prairie dog all neatly lined up or maybe you have you know, something that's more of a trophy uh, animal that you want to take or a target that means something in your competition. And if you can't hit it with that cold bore, that's going to be pretty annoying, uh, especially if it is that trophy animal. You got to wait till your second or third shot before you can make sure that you hit it, or you have to be keeping in mind how off your your uh, your hit is actually going to print when you take the shot. It's uh, you know maybe it's not going to make that big a deal if it's an elk at relatively close distance, but for me shooting prairie dogs at longer distance, that could mean the difference between hitting that animal and not. And so it's nice to know that if I do plunk down on the ground and this is you know, perfectly cold, I'm still gonna make the hit. The next thing to take a look at here is I'm gonna bring all four of these targets back up. You're gonna see that each of these is striking the target roughly in the same spot. And these are not all 105 grain bullets. The top two here, those are 105 grain. But then the ones down here, this is an 87 grain BTHP uh, match bullet and then over here this is VMAX 87 grain VMAX and I didn't dial anything on the uh, the turret to change at 400 yards I just dialed to three milliradians exactly and this is how they all printed there's no significant drift left to right based on the weight of the bullet everything seems to just be printing in the exact same spot and that is a great feat in itself as well. So if I were out and I wanted to switch over to a different kind of bullet, maybe reduce recoil, maybe get a, a different terminal effect, like maybe um, I'm out hunting hogs with heavier bullets and then a coyote walks across and I want to use something that's lighter, quicker, and uh, maybe a bit flatter shooting at closer distances, then uh, I can just swap right over and I know that I'm not going to have to change anything on this rifle. It's just going to hit the exact same spot. That is a really good thing to know. And then one more thing, as this barrel heated up, as I was shooting through all of these, there really doesn't seem to be any difference in their point of impact. Not like I'm used to seeing with that original factory barrel. It used to be, like I said, when the barrel would start heating up, things would start drifting to the right. And this one did not display that at all. Even though it was uh, getting so warm, I didn't have all that much time to be able to test these out, so I wasn't able to let the you know the barrel cool down as much as uh, some folks say that you should. It you know it had mirage coming off the barrel, and I still did not notice any shift in the impacts. All the shift that I'm seeing in here is what I would expect from a Saturday load workup. Everything's just kind of moving in their, you know, kind of harmonic course. And actually, this is something that uh, you should check out right here on these two targets. Okay, we got the 87 grain BTHP match and we have the 87 grain VMAX. These are exhibiting something that I've never seen before. This is actually kind of cool. You can see that we're getting a sort of a V shape out of these. And this is not, you know, I'm shooting up this way and then shooting this way or maybe you know the wind is catching some and pushing them off this way this is actually i would shoot a couple and it would pretty much line up on the uh the zero uh, line on the axis here and then the next few shots would be off to the right and maybe down some and then i'd print a little higher or lower you know it'd still be kind of on this axis when i took my next three shots in the line and then they'd be over here and it it's showing, I think, very visually what harmonically is going on with the barrel. Some of these are really starting to hit that accuracy node. And that's, I think those are the ones that are lining up on this, this axis right here. And then the other ones, as they're shifting and getting off the node, 
they're kind of coming off at this this funky V angle. Really interesting to see that. It's you know I'm used to them just kind of dispersing, opening up and shooting all over the place, but that's not what's happening with this. It's just kind of moving off to a different spot, and this is going to really help me pick my my favorite load here, my pet loads for this. Um, now there is one more factor that I'm going to talk about in the next video, something else that really helped to make this happen and what's going to make this rifle uh, the accurate, you know, the extreme accuracy monster that I've been looking for. Uh, we're going to talk about something that I've been screwing up for a good long while with this 12FV and uh, something that I was able to fix for the first time yesterday and the difference is just impressive. So thanks a lot everybody for watching, I hope you learned something here today. This preferred barrel blanks barrel is going to be a real game changer. I loved my telekinesis rifle before, but uh, this is just going to be so much better now. I'm going to be able to go out, like I say, on a cold, you know, a cold day, a warm day, a hot day. I can take that cold bore shot. I can take a warm shot. It does not matter. Once I actually figure out what my loads are for this, test them out and make sure that everything's really accurate. Uh, this is going to be just ready to slay whatever I want at whatever distances. Uh, this is going to be an amazing rifle and I cannot wait to see what it can do. We're gonna have to get out, do some thousand yard shooting, uh, do some, you know, some mid-range kind of practical stuff. Who knows what we might get up to with this. And uh, I'm expecting great things. One thing I should point out before I get into my uh, closing remarks, this Bushnell Match Pro rifle scope, I highly, highly recommend. I have talked about this before. This is one of those things that sitting on here makes everything else work. Uh, this is a scope that I can rely on when I'm out at whatever distances from 100 yards out to however far we're going to get with this. Uh, the image through here is extremely clear, uh, even at that 24x. Remember that this is a 6 to 24x rifle scope and it has a, uh, a, the deploy uh, milliradian reticle inside there, which is kind of like that Horus H59. Love the reticle, and it, uh, it really helped me to get on target and do everything very repeatedly out at the range yesterday. It's a first focal plane reticle, so it's gonna measure the same no matter what. And I think one of the really big deals here is the side parallax adjustment. This is, there are some scopes that as I move my eye around inside them, if I'm focused in or it's like some of them I just can't really get exactly parallax free as I move my eye around behind the scope I can still see it moving just a little bit this one I can absolutely lock down and I'm going to be assured that even at 400 yards it's going to be well within an inch of dispersion actually uh, quite a bit less than that this just does not move once you lock that parallax in so yeah, thank you everybody for helping to make videos like these possible. Thanks for watching, you guys. We have a lot more on the way, so make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell down below uh, to let you know when new videos come out because we have a lot of stuff on the way, heading in a bunch of different directions, but mostly I'm trying to get back on track with some uh, precision long-range shooting. Big thanks to Preferred Barrel Blanks for sending this barrel for me to test out. I have just been blown away by the performance on this, especially yesterday. I had some mitigating factors before that made me wonder, okay, you know, what's going on? Something is wrong with my rifle. And uh, I've been able to tweak all of those, but none of them had anything to do with the barrel. The barrel is just wonderful. And if you want to tweak one out to be exactly what you want for your rifle, we're talking about twist rate, uh, we're talking about threading, length, uh, the, the fluting, you can get all kinds of bizarre fluting on here. You can do all kinds of stuff, including wildcat chambers, if you want to get into something really fun for your rifle. I highly recommend Prefer Barrel Blanks. Uh, this has proven to be just stellar, beyond anything that uh, I could imagine. Great, great barrel. But yeah, thank you also to Bushnell for sending the scope out for me to test. It is one of my absolute favorites. It's brilliant. And uh, thank you to patrons of the Destructive Arts for helping to provide a lot of the gear that you see going on here in the background, like lights, cameras, and uh, you know, keeping me in bullets and powder so that we can continue to do these tests and be able to show you know, the everyman, show people like myself uh, how things 
actually kind of work in the real world and maybe some tips and techniques on how to uh, get some extra accuracy out of your precision rifle. Thank you to Sportsman's Guide and Stan and Mary at the 338 Lapua Magnum level out on Patreon. And then we have Joseph Davis, we have Peter, we have Mr. No Name, and we have Howard at the 300 Win Mag level and a bunch of other dudes chipping in a buck or two a month. If you'd like to be one of those, I'll put a link to Patreon around here. See y'all around. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.